Well, the first thing we have to do is make all of these layers three-dimensional. They are currently 2D, so let's click and drag down the 3D object column here in the Switches panel. And now you can see we're looking from the upper left-hand side here in our custom view 2, and all of the layers are coplanar. They all exist at exactly the same point in 3D space. Well, if we change a few things, we can actually arrange them very easily. First thing I'm going to do is down in the timeline, select the layer number six, hold down the shift key and click on the bottom layer number one to highlight all of them and then hit the A key to reveal the anchor point property. Now these layers are 300 pixels square, so currently the anchor point is at 150, 150 on the X and Y and naturally at zero because it's in the center of the 3D world. We're actually showing 150.5 here. It may be that I just set this composition slightly wrong. So let's just change one of these values here to 150 and you'll see that they all adjust accordingly. But what we want to do is make it easy to rotate these sides around and produce a finished cube. The best way to do that is to offset the anchor point on the Z axis. Instead of rotating the actual layer and then moving it into position, if the anchor point is offset and pushes the layer away from the center point, then it's easier to rotate them. You'll see exactly what I mean in just a second. With them all still selected, let's change the Z axis value here at the anchor point to 150 also. And now you can see the layers get pushed forward because the anchor point has effectively been moved backwards. This is the central point now around which we can arrange all of our layers very easily. So let's hit the R key on the keyboard to reveal the rotation properties of all of these layers and then just hit F2 for a second to deselect them. Now I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in this particular case when we're trying to actually create a die, all opposing sides should add up to the number seven. So six on the front would be reflected with one on the back four on one side with three on the other and so forth. So knowing that, we can arrange these layers correctly. So keep six on the front, that one's actually okay as it is now. We could even twirl this layer up because we don't need to see its orientation values. But if we want to put the side that has the number one on it over the back, let's scroll down here where we can see that layer, hold down the shift key and drag on the Y rotation value until we hit plus 180. Because our anchor point is now centered, you see it gets around there very, very quickly. Now the next one up in the timeline is number two, so let's do the same, hold down the shift key, drag on the Y rotation value, but only go around to 90 degrees, because we have two on this side, we should put five on the other side. So scroll back up again to the very top here where we have layer number five, do the same thing, hold down the shift key and drag on the Y value, but this time we can drag to the left and put in a minus 90 value. The final two now are the numbers four and three, and these want to be rotated over the top and over the bottom. Now at first glance it would look like we'd need to rotate them around their Z axis, but the reason we're seeing Z here is because this layer is currently selected and we are looking at its local axis handles. Don't be confused by that, this is still the X axis, the Z axis is down through here. The front of the composition and the front of the layers all begin here and go backwards on the Z. So if you come down and select layer 4, you'll see that its Z axis actually faces this way and we do want to rotate it in fact on the X. So just in case you jumped ahead there and grabbed the wrong handle, use this for reference. So now we're going to rotate with the shift key on the X rotation value, go to plus 90 degrees to move this layer down to the bottom. Same again, but in the opposite direction for layer three, hold down the shift key, drag the X rotation up to minus 90, and now you effectively have a 3D cube. Now in order to make it easier to deal with putting this inside any other composition, it would be best if we pre-composed it, turned it back into a 3D layer and collapsed our transformations, just like we did with our little biplane quite some time ago. So select all of those layers again by clicking on the top one, shift clicking on the bottom, shift control and C or shift command C on the Mac will bring up our pre-composed dialog box. And we'll give this a correct name, it's a 3D die. We'll move all attributes into the new composition, that's the only option we have. Click OK, and by default, we're now looking at a two-dimensional layer in a 3D comp. So first off, turn this layer back into a 3D layer. We now see the two-dimensional rendering of it, but from a 3D angle. If we now come over to our Collapse Transformation switch, we get our entire 3D cube back. If we were to hit the W key now and just grab this shape and rotate it round, you'll see that we're able to view this cube from any side, and you could obviously animate keyframes to make it look like this is being moved through 3D space.